Now let's consider the thought of Robert Torrens on strategic trade policy. We're again turning to Torrens's classic work, The Budget, published in 1834, and in particular we're looking at letter number three to Honorable Sir Robert Peel. Here's a picture of Peel. Peel was in Parliament and later he became Prime Minister. He was also the Prime Minister who led the abolition of the Corn Laws. So Torrens was writing his letter to a man who was already influential and bound to become much more influential when it came to trade policy. In this letter, Torrens made it clear that he favored free trade as the best situation for a nation, absolute free trade between countries. Recall that almost two decades earlier, it was Torrens who discovered the idea of comparative advantage, one of the most important notions of economics. This is often attributed to Ricardo, but actually Torrens was the one who had it first. In our course on development economics, there are two excellent videos by Alex on this idea of comparative advantage. I would refer you there. Torrens did think there was some argument for protectionism, and that argument basically was the cost of transition for industries which were already being protected. Nonetheless, Torrens thought these industries were basically parasites, and it was one way or another necessary to remove that protection with what he called a cautious and skillful hand. The key point in this letter to Peel is what we now call strategic trade policy, and Torrens wrote that one of his leading principles was, quote, to adopt with all foreign powers the principle of reciprocity. That means that you lower your tariffs for them only if they lower their tariffs on you. Torrens thought that this principle would in the longer run lead to more free trade than not trying to induce tariff reductions from other nations. And furthermore, he thought that Great Britain during that time really did have the power and influence to engage in successful strategic trade policy. Torrens did ask the key question, what if there's a one-sided tariff? For instance, the nation of France places a tariff on exports from Great Britain, but Great Britain has free trade for France. What could go wrong in that situation? Well, Torrens had a pretty striking answer. He noted that if there was this one-sided tariff, that one country, in this case Great Britain, would lose precious metals to the other country, namely France. From contemporary economics, we know this principle doesn't exactly necessarily work this way. It depends upon elasticities where the precious metals will flow. But nonetheless, in Torrance's basic argument, if Great Britain cannot export more commodities to France, then there will end up being more specie in France, because France is sending less gold to Great Britain in return for those exports. To continue our story, what happens when there's an outflow of gold from Great Britain? Well, for one thing, prices would fall, and Torrens saw this as a very bad macroeconomic outcome. He noted, and this is really quite striking, that this would increase the real value of debts in Great Britain. And this was actually an early version of the debt deflation theory of an economic downturn, which later became more popular with Irving Fisher and has continued to be an important idea today. And in this letter, Torrens wrote, and I quote, A rise in the value of money is one of the greatest evils which can occur. So Torrens was a very strong opponent of deflation, and he saw a reciprocal trade policy as one way of forestalling deflation in your country by stimulating your exports. Torrens also had specific ideas how strategic trade policy should be implemented. For instance, he was quite clear that you should never, no matter what, place tariffs on raw materials coming into your country because you needed those raw materials in order to process subsequent exports. At times, he gave the example of cotton being imported from America. Of course, at the time, Great Britain was a leading exporter of textiles. Torrens also defended British colonialism. For one thing, having colonies allows you to construct a larger free trade area. But Torrens made the subtler point that colonies make trade reciprocity easier to enforce. That is, your strategic trade policy is stronger if you can threaten another nation with losing access not only to your home market, but to the home markets of all of your colonies. So Torrens saw colonies as increasing a country's bargaining power in trade relations. Here's maybe my favorite quotation from Torrens's letter to Peel. It comes early on in the letter, and I quote, Dr. Pally has justly remarked that while it is in periods of excitement that public opinion is disclosed, it is in intervals of repose that it is formed. 
With that, he was in part suggesting that the public needed to have sounder opinions about foreign trade. The letter to Peel is really extremely important. It wonderfully lays out what we now call strategic trade theory, and it also links trade theory to factors of aggregate demand in a way that is a precursor of quite contemporary open economy macroeconomics. If there's any problem with this letter, I think it's that by modern standards, Torrens is maybe a little naive about how strategic trade theory will be applied. That is, it is rarely applied optimally, but it is often bent to the desires of special interests. So when a country perhaps ought to be removing its tariffs, it doesn't. So one danger of putting on tariffs, even for what might appear to be optimal strategic purposes, is you don't always take them away when you ought to. But in any case, this letter is really a quite striking display of virtuoso analysis from Robert Torrance.